Welcome to Home-Based Employment, What Employers Want. This webinar and telelearning series is brought to you by Can Do Multiple Sclerosis and the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. It is the fourth in a four-part series looking at employment issues and MS. You can view an archived version of the entire series on our website, mscando.org. My name is Laura Coyne, and I am the Programs Manager for Can Do MS. Your moderator this evening is Barbara McKean, the Director of Employment Programs and Services for the New York City, Southern New York Chapter of the National MS Society. Kendo MS is an innovative provider of lifestyle empowerment programs for people living with MS and their support partners. Through our programs, we empower people to manage their disease and move beyond their MS by adopting active and healthy lifestyle behaviors. Please visit the Kendo MS website, mscando.org, to learn more about Kendo MS's online and nationwide in-person programs. Kendo MS is excited to partner with the National MS Society and bring you 15 webinars in 2016. At this time, I would like to introduce Barbara McKean. Thank you, Laura. Good evening, everyone. The mission of the National MS Society is to help people affected by MS live their best lives as they stop MS in its tracks, restore what has been lost, and end MS forever. We are pleased to have you join us in tonight's program, and you can explore other societies' programs, services, and resources, and connection opportunities at nationalmssociety.org. We will save about 15 to 20 minutes at the end of this webinar for questions and answers. If you do have a question, please post them in the chat feature located on the left side of your computer screen. To submit a question, type in the small box that says Chat with Presenters. You may want to wait a little till the uh, latter part of the presentation to see if your question is answered during the program as many questions were shared with us prior to the program, and our presenters plan to do their best to address them throughout the presentation. Just note that this presentation is being recorded and will be archived on CANDU MS's and National MS Society's websites. Because this is being recorded, all telephone lines have been muted. The topic for tonight's webinar is home-based employment what employers want. The aging of our workforce has caused employers to prepare for a time when there may be a shortage of workers and they will have to become more accommodating to employees, such as older workers or workers with disabilities, who might need the option of working from home. It's not uncommon for individuals living with MS at some point in time to consider working from home due to fatigue, mobility issues, or other MS symptoms. This evening, our presenters will address work at home benefits, types of work at home jobs, requirements, where to find work at home jobs, application and interview tips, accommodation, and other questions. Our speakers for this evening are Sally Jones and Paula Vier. Paula is the CEO of Employment Options and is a nationally certified vocational evaluator who has expertise for over 20 years helping people with physical, mental, and emotional challenges find suitable jobs. Paula is nationally recognized as a consultant, well-known speaker, and has consulted with the Social Security Administration on their Ticket to Work program. Sally is a virtual recruiting professional with over 10 years experience focusing on work at home employment. Most recently, she was the Senior Director of Work at Home Candidate Experience for Sutherland Global Services where she led a team of home-based recruiting professionals supporting six unique lines of business in several different industries such as telecom, cable, financial software services, gaming, and retail. And you might find it interesting to know that the Work at Home Division of Sutherland experienced tremendous growth over the past year, more than doubling in size as employers are realizing the benefits of having a remote workforce, and more people are choosing a work at home position for work-life balance and flexibility. 
Now before I turn the program over, we have a polling question for all of you. Um, we'd like to know what are you most interested in hearing about today? So to answer this question, you're just going to click on one of these options. Work at home opportunities, finding work at home opportunities, work at home pros and cons, how to avoid scams, and what employers are looking for. So just click on one of those little squares, and we'll give you a little time to do that. We're going to have a few more little polls throughout the presentation, so this is kind of just to get you prepared. We still have a lot of people clicking, so I'm going to wait a couple more minutes. So as you can see, finding work at home opportunities is um, largely what m many of the people on the call want to hear this evening, as well as um, what kinds of work home, home, at home opportunities there are and uh, how to avoid scams. I know that in the pre-questions that was of particular interest to many, many people. And of course what employers are looking for. So on that note, I am going to turn the program over to Sally and Paula. Thanks Barbara. So um, <clears throat> I'm very happy to be here tonight. And I just wanted to start off with, uh, you know, what do you picture? You know, what is it that you think when you hear work from home? Um, you know, are you thinking about uh, hanging out in your pajamas all day? Are you thinking about uh, the fuzzy slippers? I can tell you that I have uh, consistently enjoyed the fact that I haven't had to go out and scrape my car windows in the winter time to go to uh, commute to work. There are definitely some things that are, are benefits that come along with working from home. But there are some, you know, things that you might not consider. Uh, you can't necessarily work from home so that you can do other things at the same time. Um, it's very unlikely that you can have a work at home position where you'll be able to take care of yours or, or your neighbor's kids, uh, answer the door, pick up packages. You know, there's a, a lot of, of different things that you need to consider, uh, not just the benefits from a work at home standpoint. But let's talk about the good stuff first and foremost, shall we? So again, one of the things that I think um, is a great draw is you know, the lack of uh, a required dress code. Um, if you sound like you are wearing a three-piece suit, if you sound like you have your hair combed and your lipstick on, um, that, you know, that's great. That's really a lot of what it comes down to because employers are looking for you to use your voice in, in a lot of these positions. And so the ability to uh, you know, maintain that that uh, professional image uh, is, is definitely important. Skipping the commute, fantastic. I got to tell you that that was really a, a big benefit this past uh, winter. Saving money on on lunch and dry cleaning. There was a, a Starbucks in the lobby of where I used to work, and I got to tell you that was really really expensive habit. Um, going into you know my kitchen and brewing a cup of coffee uh, with my Keurig is is a great saving uh, over what I did before. But you know, there are some other benefits that you might not consider. Um, you know, so let's talk a little bit about that. From an environmental standpoint, you know, we reduce the number of drivers on the road, which reduces the number of gallons of gas used per year and greenhouse gases that are put out into the atmosphere. Um, you know, there's a, a real impact from an environmental standpoint, for every thousand workers, we're looking at reducing uh, almost 20 days of, uh, of, of lost days of, of employment from a commute uh, standpoint. I can't get to work. My car broke down. Um, there's a time saving. There are traffic injuries and deaths avoided every year. There are also some tremendous social benefits that you can realize. Um, working at home, a lot of companies have realized, you know, this provides us an access to a whole new group of people. Um, so let's look at, can we bring employment to areas where they are, uh, the uh, population is underemployed? Uh, a lot of times you'll see where a plant has closed and it's a small community, everybody works there. Uh, a lot of times you'll see companies uh, from a work at home standpoint bringing those jobs and targeting those folks as candidates. And it replaces some of the, the work that had gone away. Um, it expo expands employment opportunities for disabled workers. Companies are really, um, you know, looking at this, trying to become more accommodating 
not just from the standpoint of it's a have to, but because it's a want to, it's the right thing to do. And being able to bring, um, you know, employment and look at things in a new way, this is definitely high on the list of priorities. Uh, this is all through, provides alternatives that, you know, people are kept out of the workforce if they have uh, other lifestyle issues, like a, maybe a, a need to care for an aging parent or what have you. And a lot of people are, are turning to this in a secondary career. Um, they may have had a successful career and retired, but they're not ready to sit on the front porch in their rocker yet. Uh, so we're looking at, you know, slowing that brain drain of the retiring baby boomers. You know, 75% of them have said they want to continue to work. This provides, um, you know, a low-key option for that, um, where they've worked so hard to have their home, uh, they want to spend some time in it, and, um, but they also still want to earn some money. There are some real cost savings that you can realize by working from home. And so we did this little chart trying to be relatively conservative, comparing um, what you look at from a work at home position to what we call brick and mortar, where that is an on site position. And you know, you reduce the number of, of uh, uh, you know, miles that someone has to uh, travel, you reduce your you know, lunch, dry cleaning, all of those things, and it could come up to close to $6,000 a year based upon you know, these particular areas. Now, a lot of these companies that are really focused upon work at home um, also have a lifestyle cal calculator on their website. So you can put in your own individual um, numbers and do your own total. And so that's something to consider as well. But on average, you know, conservatively speaking, you should probably factor in an additional three hours or three dollars per hour in compensation. So if you're looking at a work at home position that pays nine dollars and an on site position that pays twelve, they're really um, equal in that regard. So that's something to keep in mind as you're considering um, work at home because a lot of times you will see that the, the rates do seem lower and this is part of it. Now I'm going to turn it over to Paula. She's going to talk a little bit about the different types of work at home jobs and uh, she's got some good information for you here. Hi. Well, there, you know, the best thing about work from home jobs is that it, they're changing constantly. Every day there's a new employer that's willing to try out something new and try to, to make one of their jobs virtual. And there's a lot of different types of work from home jobs out there, uh, you know, in cyberspace. And so the two main distinctions between the work at home jobs from a tax standpoint are your 1099 jobs and your W-2 jobs. And I think this is important for you to understand the difference because uh, it's just a totally different beast. Now the 1099 jobs or, you know, it could be called self-employment you are responsible for handling all your own uh, taxes. You are your own boss. You usually don't get any benefits at all. Uh, you don't qualify for company benefits. You're basically your own boss. Um, but a lot of times there's still requirements from the companies that you be available during certain hours or be able to work a certain amount of time. Even though you're your own boss, there's, there's criteria. So sometimes it seems like it would work for you uh, and depending upon the actual job itself may or may not work. Some of the types of job duties that I see are medical transcription. To get into that type of work you really have to have background already in transcription. Um, they usually won't take a chance on somebody who hasn't worked out in the community doing that. Search engine evaluators, you see this on Google, and I know we have a few people working doing that, and it, it seems to work if you've got the right skills. Uh, it's a little complicated, um, but it's for the right person, it, it's, it's a lot of evaluation and keeping track and counting. And then the surveys, uh, people who are doing surveys, calling, it's usually just like if you were in a an office somewhere making telephone calls out asking people about who they're going to vote for or what kind of detergent they like the best. Um, and they tend to be flexible that they'll hire you for one survey and then you might not have something for a couple of weeks and then you might be able to get another survey. 
um, the, and then the mystery shopping, again, that's kind of, you know, here and there in employment. It's not going to be every day. I was a mystery shopper once and got to go flower shopping at different flower stores, and that was fun. But it wasn't a, a great source of income. So the 1099 jobs are a lot more flexible, but they are also often a lot less stable. You may just not have that much work. So if you're looking to supplement uh, your income or if you only feel like you can work a little bit, then these may be the types of jobs that you might want to look for. Uh, is it changing? I clicked on it. There we go. Okay. So then we have what we call the W-2 jobs. And those are the more traditional jobs. Uh, they have set hours. Your taxes are withheld. You get company benefits. And a lot of the work from home companies that we work for, they all have some kind of benefits. So the only difference between working in a W-2 position at home and working in a W-2 position in a company like in a call center is that you're at home, but you still have set hours. You're expected to be there at a certain time, and your day ends at a certain time also. Maybe even stricter in work from home because, you know, when you log on oftentimes is when, when your timesheet is marked. And some of the typical job titles that we see for these W-2 positions, which have been up till now, this has been the most common type of work from home job like customer service or tech support or concierge that would be making reservations for people or uh, helping arrange a babysitter, um, usually requires a real high-level administrative assistant type of jobs or concierge experience. Um, the sales jobs. Now, we, we see all different types of sales jobs in work from home. Some of them uh, are inside outside sales where you would be working from your home but that you would be required to travel uh, in your in your area but you would, your headquarters would be your home um, we also see the inside sales positions where they would be incoming calls like somebody might be calling in and wanting to order cable TV and this would be the person answering the phone and part of their job would be to upsell um, to try to get a person to buy more, we, we see a lot of the a lot of the customer service jobs having a little bit of a sales component to them. Um, we see tech support jobs, well, pretty much everything. A lot of help desk or help desk for a company. We get the gaming tech support, which a lot of people like, where you actually working with a person on one of the games and helping them get to the next level or when they get stuck or setting it up or setting up their new TV, uh, those types of jobs. Um, reservations. We, we have one company that we work with that does a lot of reservations for campgrounds. Uh, it's kind of a seasonal type of position where a couple times a year when it gets real busy, they hire on a bunch of people and then they kind of let you off for a little bit of time. So even though it's a W-2 position, it, it's not necessarily all year long. We see the dispatching, dispatching for trucks, dispatching. Uh, one of the new ones I've been seeing is, is plumbers or electricians, you know, uh, home improvements dispatching. Uh, so what's nice about that, that we're seeing more and more jobs with different types of specialties out there. I, I do see a lot of project management jobs, and a lot of times those are w 2 Sometimes they're 1099, depending upon who you get the job through. Um, we do also see that we are, you know, I've been trying to specialize a little bit in some of the nursing work-at-home jobs. What I'm finding with the nursing is that if you have recent experience, like within the last three years, uh, they're more likely to consider you uh, because I guess if you haven't been working in nursing for in the last three years, then you're out of date with some of the different pharmaceuticals that have come out, and um, sometimes they like you to take a refresher course uh, to get up to speed. And then they have the IC10 that's come out, and so with the medical coding, 
I do see medical coding jobs out there. Uh, again, most of the work from home jobs that I see require that you have some experience in medical coding um, and that they, uh, you know, if you've just gone and gotten your medical coding diploma in one of the on-site, you know, one of the virtual training programs, and then even if you've had some medical experience, unless you've actually worked coding, there's maybe like one or two companies that might consider somebody without the experience. But we're not seeing a lot of that. I know that there's other jobs out there in, I've seen some work at home dentist jobs. I see work at home radiology jobs where, you know, a doctor would read x-rays uh, virtually. Uh, so, Every day when I open up my computer, I, I see totally different jobs out there. And some of them I don't know about yet. Some of them I haven't had a good candidate yet to really explore, explore the job. Um, but we, we do have a real good idea when we're looking at job descriptions and I'm talking to, to employers. We, we get a, you know, about a, an employer a day that contacts us uh, for work at home personnel. And we can tell pretty pretty quickly if they're just a startup company, if they're trying to get people to help them for free, um, or if they're more established. Because uh, you see everything out there. And I, and I know that's scary for a lot of people. And we'll talk a little bit more about the scam portion. But, you know, some of the questions you can ask are, you know, how long have you been in business? And are you willing to work with a startup? Because I do see a lot of that out there. So, oops, did we skip one? Okay, so the physical and emotional requirements of W-2 positions. Most of what we have been helping people find jobs doing have been the call center positions. Uh, there is a ton of call center work out there. And physically, some of the issues that we've seen with, with people of all disabilities um, is being able to work that four-hour stretch. Um, even if you're working a part-time job, you know you can get up and down a little bit. You can have maybe a long cord to your phone, but you are going to be pretty much glued to your computer. What generally happens is you're you're working, your computer dings, and you've got your next call. So you can't really be you know going to the kitchen or or doing something other than working, uh, or, or you won't keep your job. Train full-time for a part-time job. So that's another issue we see a lot of times for the people we try to help get into these positions is that there are part-time jobs out there in work from home, in the call centers especially. There's, there's a lot of part-time work, but you do have to be able to train full-time for this part-time job. And how much training is that? Well, for maybe with the flower companies, you know, maybe it's less than a week uh, of training. But if you're going to be working for a, a tech support, it could be up to six weeks of training, of high-level training because there's a lot to learn. I would say most of the time, you know, two to three weeks of training, maybe four. Um, and maybe Sally could answer that a little bit more from what you saw, saw too, but that's what we see. And, uh, and then after that, you, you will have a part-time schedule. So we, we kind of try to help people just hang in there during that training, know that it's going to be rough at the beginning, and then just hold in there. You know, you only got two more days of training uh, full-time, and, and you will, you know, you'll be on to the next level. We are seeing very little part-time training for part-time jobs. Here and there I get a job with a reputable employer that's doing that. But most of the time you have to plan on being able to train full-time. And you do have to be able to see the screens clearly. We're, I'm always advocating with our customer service companies, with our call centers, oh, please, can we get JAWS or Zoom Tech? But it's very difficult for them to accommodate this technology. The JAWS, they just, with all the updates all the time, it's just so much programming that they just 
we haven't been able to convince anyone yet to to accommodate for the call center work at home jobs with JAWS. Um, and the Zoom tech isn't very practical because a lot of times you might have 10, 15 browser windows open at one single stretch. And if you, you've got Zoom tech, you really can't, you can't navigate very easily uh, from one screen to the other because it's, it's zoomed in so clearly. So right now, we do not have any work at home jobs that if you use JAWS or Zoom Tech that you would qualify for. And then there's the emotional. Oh, I have, oh no, we got some more physical requirements of the job. So frequent keyboarding. And this is often an issue uh, with people with MS in, in that a lot of times I talk to people and they have trouble with their hands. They have trouble keyboarding. Well, these jobs require 25 words per minute minimum. And I'm talking again the work at home call center, work at home customer service, tech support. You are going to be talking and typing at the same time. So sometimes if cognitively some days aren't as good as other days, sometimes people have trouble with the multitasking portion of this job. Uh, it, and it's, it's over and over. You know, one call comes in and then the next call comes in. You must be able to speak clearly. Um, what's really cool about having a virtual company and helping people virtually get back to work is that I don't know what you look like. I don't know if you're working in your bed. I don't know if you're in a wheelchair. I don't know anything about how you look. And it doesn't matter. But it does matter to be able to speak clearly. So sometimes with people with different disabilities, sometimes your speech is impacted. And if you can't speak clearly, then they probably will not hire you for a call center position. Um, and it's, it's just one of the minimum requirements of the job that we're able to understand you on the phone. You must be able to hear. Right now, I just don't have any jobs that are chat only. Um, even if it is a primarily a chat job, what's going to happen is that they are going to do the training using words. And so the, we haven't found any company yet that's willing to put in a chat only job. I, I think the telephone company should all have on their customer service page, a little chat only page where they would actually speak with a hearing impaired person and they could sign. There's a technology for that. But we're still we're still advocating. Uh, but you know, uh, that's the best we can do. So then there's some emotional requirements of the job. I you don't want to talk with me when I'm talking with the with my phone bill that I don't understand. Sometimes it gets confusing and you're working with difficult people who are frustrated. They don't understand their bill. They don't understand why their internet's not working. They don't, uh, you know, they're having problems. So emotionally, you're going to be dealing with difficult people. You have to be able to empathize and, you know, gain their trust. You have to have patience uh, because the person on the other end of the line might not have very good patience, and you have to you have to have take the high ground, and you can't get easily offended. I mean, we've all been on hold, and we've all talked with customer service reps that we we got we got upset because the situation is upsetting. So. You know, if, if it's really difficult for you to deal with difficult people, you know, they will train you um, in their customer service training programs how to answer, you know, a person that's difficult. And they will train you how to be courteous and handle the people, but you're going to be doing that. And then... Um, I think the 
take a little bit of a lag to get the slide up there. We, well, we're ready for our next polling question. So can you multitask, sit for four hours straight, and train full time? So, okay. So what are the work requirements? Uh, so all applicants must be legally able to work in the U.S. You must have a high school diploma or GED. And these are the work requirements for most of the call center tech support jobs and W-2 positions that I'm talking about. You must have excellent communication skills. You must be able to work a set schedule, which often includes weekends, evening, holidays, and full-time training hours. So, you know, they're very... We do get some Monday through Friday jobs, daytime, but not a whole lot. And usually those jobs are going to go to the more senior uh, people in the company that they'll be offered those shifts first. Uh, so, no, you really just can't get the holiday off. They need you on the holidays. You must have a quiet, noise-free home office, free of distractions. So. No petting the dog, uh, no kids, no TVs on. Uh, I like to work outside, but can't really do that because the birds are chirping. Um, so it has to be quiet. You do need to type 25 words per minute, and they will test you. And most of the work at home companies require one year of customer service experience. Now, it doesn't have to be on the phone. You could have been a receptionist. You could, uh, could have worked in retail or as a waitress, uh, something that you're dealing with customers on a frequent basis. Some of the jobs are stricter about the call center jobs depending uh, upon the particular position. But there are jobs that if you worked at Walmart that you can probably uh, qualify for one of their positions. The medical jobs do require a current state license. Um, a lot of them have rep oh, I can't say this word reciprocity, um, and that um, so we have been able to to look up the states and their states that um, will allow a nurse to work in another state. Uh, okay, so Sally's gonna talk some more about the work requirements. Right. So any of the positions, um, you know, work from home, it will have in the job description whether or not um, you need to provide your own equipment or whether or not the company um, will provide equipment to you. So you should look at that as part of the job posting. Read the job posting carefully. Uh, but generally speaking, we're looking, you know, you'll be uh, looking to have either a laptop or a computer, an uh, Intel-based computer. Macs are generally not accepted. Chromebooks, all-in-ones, those generally are not accepted either. Um, you know, all of the companies are going to list out what their Internet requirements are, upload, download speeds, and all of that. And you don't have to necessarily know what they are because the testing will you know, capture that information for the company. But what's important about that is is that most of the companies use voice over IP technology, so you would not necessarily have to have a landline in order to do the work. You'll take the calls through your computer. So a lot of times, uh, you know, your, your company that you represent is going to send you a computer that has everything on it. Other times, they're going to ask you to bring your own equipment, have it tested, and provide uh, the Internet connectivity for that. So definitely, as far as requirements go, um, definitely look at the job description. Uh, companies are required to put things in the job description if they're going to hold you accountable to them. So make sure that you're reviewing that you know, carefully. Um, any company is also going to have some certain uh, background and uh, due diligence requirements. All companies are going to ask you to do the federal I-9 uh, that's required within the first three days. A lot of companies have all the paperwork work, uh, requirements worked out virtually. So you'll be providing all of this and you'll be doing all of this from your own home. 
again, everything from applying for the job, interacting with your recruiting um, staff, the hiring managers, uh, up through the training it can all be done virtually at home. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, how to avoid some of the things out there that we've all read about, right? So there are uh, scams. Uh, I think somebody mentioned earlier that they ran into one with a mystery shopper. So first and foremost, if any company is asking you to spend any of your money in order to make money for them, just delete them, put them uh, in your junk mail folder. You know, don't, don't uh, give them any credence. It's important to do your homework. Um, and there is a ton of information out there. And what we can do here is you know, give you some sites that have been validated, people that we have worked with, both Paul and myself, have, have interacted with these folks, and we can tell you that they are quality and that what they put out there is true. So the first and foremost is Rat Race Rebellion. Chris Durst founded this company, and um, she speaks often. Um, I've seen her on Fox & Friends. She's been invited to speak on Good Morning America about avoiding work-at-home scams. She has a tremendous list of information on her website. The companies that she let advertise there or have posted there um, have been personally vetted and vetted, uh, vetted by her. If she doesn't know who they are or if it's a Facebook ad uh, that is on her site, she you know, calls that out as well. So lots of really great information on that site. Two sites that have really super information for people that are looking for um, you know, more professional type of uh, uh, position um, using your you know, college degree or your specific training. Um, you'll see those on flex jobs and virtual vocations. Flex jobs, again, tremendous information about all these different companies that are out there. Um, they do a lot of seminars, webinars uh, with people, in, and uh, these are you know based on the companies. Now this is. Both uh, flex jobs and virtual vocations, you do have to pay a membership fee um, in order to see the jobs and to you know apply for the jobs through their site. But I can tell you that a lot of companies um, look at them as source material, meaning they look at where the candidates who apply to them are coming from, and you know if they're coming through one of those sites, they have a better uh, opinion of that person before they even talk to them. So, you know, definitely take a look there. On virtual vacations, you will see everything from, you know, um, a, a very basic position all the way through an uh, executive vice president position. So there are a lot of uh, varieties out there. Keywords to look for, remote, uh, telecommute, virtual. Um, it's really difficult to uh, look for those jobs on LinkedIn and Career Builder. Uh, so sometimes you have to go into the advanced search options and use that as your keyword, um, and then select the particular job field like human resources or managerial or IT, and then it will show you any position that has that in their title. Um, I can tell you that companies have a lot of information or a lot of uh, difficulty trying to, to you know, capture uh, the right, the right uh, terminology because it's work from home, work at home. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of different options. So if you get stuck on one, change it up and, and try a different one. Um, the uh, the um, fees are about you know, $15, $16 a month. If you want to try it out for a month, uh, you can also do it for a longer period of time. Uh, so, you know, definitely that's something to take a look at and consider. Again, those keywords that I said were telecommute, virtual, work at home, work from home, and remote. Those are, are the ones that you're going to, you know, want to play around with in your keyword searches. There's also a, a great deal of information, and here's where you really get the real real, Facebook. There are groups out there, Virtual Workers of America, the Work at Home Woman, the Work at Home Life. These are virtual, uh, these are people who are dedicated to working virtually. And what you can do there is work and talk to other people who are already um, investigating companies, 
or have worked for particular companies, you can put a, a thing out there and say, hey, I've got an opportunity for a mystery shopper with XYZ company. And in five seconds, you will have three or four um, dozen women or men responding back saying, oh, no, no, that's a scam. Run, run, run. So, you know, definitely there is a real community out here in um, the virtual world. And we're dedicated to helping one another um, avoid, you know, some of these people that, uh, that you don't want to come across. So do your homework. Make some connections. Um, you know, take a look. You can certainly be workers. Um, on all of those sites. You don't have to interact, but you'll get a lot of really good information um, starting there right off the top. Now, this is a slide that has a lot of sites on it. Um, I personally have vetted these sites. Uh, there, are, there are lists like this on Rat Race. Uh, there are lists very similar to this um, on about.com, um, on uh, work at home, Moms, there are a lot of different places that have these. I just picked these because um, they're very uh, unique and they show the variety of options that are out there that are not uh, necessarily a W-2 type of position. If, if you know, as Paula had shown, you know, some of the physical requirements and, and the minimum words of typing, and I was seeing the, the uh, uh, I was seeing the uh, questions coming in in regards to that. Uh, you know, here are a variety of positions that you can investigate. Okay, so you will get uh, this presentation. I'm pretty sure that it's planned to be sent out to you, and you will have this information to go and look at. Again, uh, lots of different sites that are out there. Those are actively um, going through accepting applications right now. So once you apply, here's some information that you need to know. Um, typical work at home um, call center type companies receive about 5,000 applications monthly. Um, so what you want to do <laughs> in order to get the interview is to complete every single bit of the requirements as quickly as possible. Meaning if you um, apply and it says, now go on to this assessment, go do the assessment. Um, don't come back to it later because you'll probably forget. And a recruiter is not even going to look at your information until all of those requirements have been, you know, met. They're looking at, you know, they've got jobs to fill, they've got a target, they've got a certain number to hit. They're going to go with the people who have met the requirements as far as the the have tos first and foremost. Then they're going to go to the next step and get to the interview. So definitely take a look at the requirements and follow the directions. There's a ton of stuff that is out there um, on their website. They'll have FAQs that will help you get through their application process. So don't get frustrated. Read those. Um, they, but part of what they're looking for too is are you self-sufficient enough in order to get through that? Can you move quickly enough um, and can you follow directions? They're looking at that as part of the evaluation. Now, during the application process, you may be asked, are you able to perform the duties of this job with or without reasonable accommodations? You should be able to answer yes. If there's anything that is keeping you from being able to do the job, but if you had an accommodation you could, well, then the answer is yes. But if you can't do it, um, then you know, definitely pay attention to the job description and use that as, as your guide to whether or not this is something that you should or should not pursue. Um, but you know, don't let yourself be taken out too soon. Go for it. And uh, you know, what's the worst that can happen? They don't hire you? Okay. Move on to the next one. Every single step in this is, is just more information for you. It's really helpful and it just gets you ready for the next step. Now, a lot of times during the application process, they will go after you've submitted, they'll ask you, you know, some questions for EEOC. And at this point, they may ask you if you have a disability. I personally have seen this. Um, you know, so get, don't get uh, sidetracked with that. It doesn't go to the recruiters. They won't see that particular stuff. Companies are trying to capture that information. And you may also be asked to complete the 8850. Um, and this is, a, uh, what, this is so that companies can receive a tax credit. And this can also sometimes be helpful for you. 
um, you'll be, you know, so go ahead and, and don't be um, concerned if you're asked about these things. It won't be used to evaluate you and discriminate against you. Okay, Paula. Um, so we, we have another polling question here. How many of you are on SSI or SSDI? Uh, we're trying to get an idea of how many of you actually on 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 Social Security Disability. So, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that if you are on SSI or SSDI, it's very important for you to be enrolled with an employment network or with a voc rehab to help you go back to work, regardless of if you need help or not, because your your ticket benefits will be protected if you are enrolled with an employment network. And also we are able to get information for you and help you out with your benefit planning that, that other people would not normally be able to do. Uh, we focus on helping people find W-2 employment. We have earning requirements that, um, that the whole purpose of the Ticket to Work program is to help people eventually uh, leave the disability roles if they are able. Um, that said, if you are, uh, you know, a high wage earner, you have a 1099 job, you're a nurse, you're a, a project manager, if you start making over 11, thir uh, over 810 a month, that's trial work level, or you start work earning over $1,130, that's substantial gainful uh, activity, uh, you really should have your ticket assigned. I had a nurse I was working with in, in Hawaii, and she had moved and uh, had not received her letter uh, scheduling a medical review. And she assigned her ticket to us. Uh, we helped her find a job as a nurse in, in Hawaii, and she was so happy. And then all of a sudden, she, she called them, and she got the, the medical review letter, and they said, well, you have to go to your medical re review. And she says, well, you know, I'm assigned, my ticket's assigned to an employment network. But they said, yes, but the letter was mailed first. And so that date of the letter took precedent. She actually had an emotional disability. They said, well, now you're working, so now you don't have an emotional disability. And she lost it. So just make sure that you're, you're protected, and that is by working with an, an employment network or with your vocational rehabilitation. Let's see, um, what's special about employment options is that we work with some of the largest call center operations in the country. Uh, back in 2007, it seems like every other person that called me wanted work-at-home jobs, and so we really targeted work-at-home employers. And now we've got these great relationships where. They may have received 5,000 applications that month, and we may have referred 20 people to them, and we'll meet biweekly with the recruiter who will actually give us feedback on each one of our candidates, why they are going to go on to the next step or why they're being passed over. And this really helps. It really helps us to get feedback, to find out where, you know, what's holding you back from these work-from-home jobs or if you need accommodations. We, we have a really good contact with the employers. Uh, we, we've worked with a lot of, almost all of the larger employers we work with, and we really can help you navigate the different employment opportunities out there. We know which, which company's training is a little more difficult. Um, so uh, that's well, Paul, that's I think the, the fact that you can get feedback for our people is really positive uh, because a lot of times it feels like you know, you go into this big black hole uh, after you apply with a company. So, you know, I think that that can certainly, uh, that's certainly one of the best things. And I know from an employer standpoint, you know, when someone has been referred by your organization, we know that they've already been screened. And that's why I think um, you've had such success is because, you know, you, you do provide a service for both the candidates and for the employers. Oh, the employers love us. <laughs> they, know they can give us. They do. They they know. They first of all, they know everybody's been pre-screened. They know that everybody's got the right computers. They've got the right cell phone. They've got the right phone set up, um, and so they don't have to worry about that. And they also know that they can give me honest feedback. Everybody we work with has a disability, 
And while I wish it wasn't so, not everybody with a disability is as well suited to these types of jobs as someone else. And we just have to be honest with ourselves. And when we receive honest feedback from employers, we share that with you in a way that helps you move to the type of job that would be better suited for you. So I think that's that's really in, important that we're able to do that. Definitely. Um, well, let's uh, let's give them some of the interview tips that uh, you and I had talked about before. Um, you know, I think keeping a log of the companies that you applied to, the date that you applied, if you've heard back from them, um, I think that's really important, especially if you do get a, a follow-up from a recruiter. Knowing the recruiter's name is really important and, and helpful for follow-up. Um, if you get a call from a recruiter, they, they live on the phone. They are on the phone all day long. So make it easy for them. Um, they're kind of, they don't want to be lazy, but if you make it easy for them, you get the call back. Uh, so you leave them the voicemail that says, hey, I will be at my phone at this time. We'd be glad to speak with you. You can send them an email uh, saying the same thing. My availability is from this hour to this hour today. Um, and you, know, you can set up an interview by email without having to play phone tag all day. So definitely that's something um, for you to consider as well. And then the biggest one is uh, check your spam folders. A lot of times companies do send um, you know, mass emails about positions and they can get routed to your uh, junk mail. And you don't want that to happen. If there's a company that you are targeting that you want to work for, send them to you, send their, um, make sure they're on your safe senders list so those messages don't get routed to your junk mail. And um, let's see. So another thing to remember is you know, anytime that you're interacting with someone from the organization, it might not be the position for you at that time, um, but there might be another one within the company that comes up. And depending upon how you handle the interaction with the, re the frontline recruiter, that's going to make a difference on whether or not you get that consideration for the next step. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. They can make sure that you go no further, or they can make sure that you, you know, are considered for everything. Um, Review the job description. I said that before, but I can't emphasize that enough. Um, think about the questions that you want to have asked in regards to the position. Um, this should demonstrate that you understand what the job is, that you've listened to the recruiter as you've had the, in the interaction, that you read the job description, and that you know what the company is all about. Um, talk about the compensation benefit and your need for accommodation later on. Uh, not during the initial interview, unless you are specifically asked. And if you are specifically asked, you should probably take some very good notes of, about that conversation. Uh, that's for your benefit and your protection. Um, and then do ask them what the next steps are in the recruiting process. Thank the recruiter for their time. Always be thinking, even if I don't want to work for this company, it may be, you know, it, it's best to leave things on the right note because you never know um, where they're going to end up the next, where you, your paths may cross again. Uh, in regards to the accommodation questions, you know, Paula, we, we've, uh, I think we've covered some of these already in regards to the training for part-time jobs. Almost all the time it's full-time. And that's because, you know, companies have a real desire to get you profitable and productive as quickly as possible. So they, you know, they're designed for full-time training. Training can be anywhere from a week like Paul said, for a seasonal position to provide support for a, a, a flower uh, company during their busy season, or it can be as long as you know, six to eight weeks for more technical positions. Keeping that in mind, that should be disclosed to you during the interview process. Uh, you should just be aware of that during that time, that time frame. Uh, Paula, in regards to attendance, have, have you had any conversations with uh, your, your employers where they've had some, uh, some discussions with you about that? They do, and really there seems to be a pretty low tolerance for missing any training days. Now, we have had employers that somebody's been training and then their house burnt down and we were able to get them to start the next training or they were hospitalized and they were able to start over again. But you can't just stop and have, you know, a day where you had a bad day. Uh, the training is, they require 100% attendance, so that's difficult. Um, 
and uh, you can't accommodate it. It's, you know, if one day you just don't feel well, well, you know, you kind of have to go to work uh, or, or you won't be able to hold your job. Um, the split shifts, I am seeing some companies with split shifts now, which is helpful for a lot of people. Uh, there's not a lot yet, but there could be more. Um, other accommodation questions. Uh, uh, again, the typing speed. You know, for the work at home call center jobs, we need the 25 words per minute. Uh, maybe you can answer about the easily fatigued. Can I schedule breaks? Um, and generally you know, speaking, you know, in a call center type of uh, world, um, I don't know that that can be um, that that could be as accommodated. I think they, there would need to be um, a doctor's note uh, during the time, and that works out after you have had had uh, the offer. They would put you in touch with the human resource department, and then you can um, make some of those. Uh, suggestions and they can work uh, to accommodate that. Say we have more luck when a person's already made it through training and they've been working and then they have problems. Then we have more luck with the employer by getting a letter from the doctor and we have been able to negotiate some breaks. Uh, but it, it is a battle. It's a battle to, 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 to try to do that. Um, the vision impaired we've talked about. Frequent questions, do you pay for retraining? Uh, no, if you do need retraining, we do have a partner who uh, will help you with your customer service skills, and uh, that's free uh, for disabled people. And uh, you can go to our help at myemploymentoptions.com, and we have a list of, of those, those partners. Uh, purchase your computer. We don't have any upfront funding from the government for computers or phone lines, or uh, because of because of the, the, the ticket to work programs, uh, rules, you know, starting your own business is not something that we are involved with. If you do need a computer, you can buy one um, on Craigslist or something, buy an older computer, don't buy a Windows 10 computer. A lot of the companies still don't take Windows 10. I would rather have you come to me with a, with a Windows 7 computer uh, and then I can probably get, you know, even if it only costs $100. So there's ways, or you can go to Voc Rehab. So we did talk that we want you to be enrolled with an EN or VR. Uh, if, if you are an SSI or SSDI, it will offer you protection of the program as well as assistance, vocational assistance. You can only be signed up with one of them at a time. And if you don't know if you're signed up with somebody, uh, we, we can find out for you. Um, okay, so I think we're about ready for some questions. Yes, you guys, we are definitely. Um, we have a lot of questions. I don't know if we're going to be able to get through all of them, but I promise you, all of you that are listening, that um, if we don't get to your questions, I will make sure after the program is over that you do get a response to your question. So if again, if you don't get your question answered this evening. Please don't be concerned that you won't get that information. You will. Um, it may just take us a day or two. Um, so let me get to some of them. Um, uh, someone here asks, are you paid for the training when you do the training? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good question. There you go. Um, now the next question is, do four-hour shifts offer a 15-minute break? Sally? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Someone wanted to know if I'm doing a four hour shift, would would they get a fifteen minute break? Do they get any break during a four hour shift? Yes. A fifteen minute break. Okay. Um someone wanted to know um if uh these jobs are also offered to family members who quit their job to be full time caregivers to someone with MS. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, now, are some of these jobs permanent, or are most of them temporary? No, a lot of them. And you'll, you'll know that um, you know you can have permanent part time, permanent full time, 
Um, so there's a, a good variety. Most of the time when we're looking for anything that is not permanent, we would put seasonal in the job title. But and, be sure. And I did notice that there were some questions that there's people want. Well, I didn't have very, you know, my experience was a long time ago. Um, and a lot of times the seasonal positions are what we need to do first in order yes. to get you back in the workplace. They're, they're not as picky uh, with your qualifications for some of the seasonal positions. So sometimes we've got to start, you know, at a lesser lesser job and then move you up. And we do see upward mobility in these work-at-home jobs. And we see some really good work-at-home jobs that end up paying. You know, a lot of them might start at, you know, nine an hour, but then if you've been working for a while, I mean, in, in, even in the call center jobs, you know, it can go up to 12, 15 an hour. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can become a manager. So there is room for growth in these jobs. Uh, Definitely. Right. And, and, and well, yeah, one of the reasons why a lot of those companies are, are you know looking at this population um, as you know really viable candidates is because it's first work at home, and they know that you know there's a good match there. But they're looking for retention. They want to hire people that they can have on the team for a long time. So you know that's part of this as well, and that's why there's been such uh, you know, so, so much more interest in bringing um, a, awareness of these positions to this population. Great, great answers. Thank you. Um, someone here asked if part time more often is eight hours a day, a few days per week, or for example, four hours a day for five days a week. What's more uh, common? Yeah, it's generally four to five hours, and it's generally evenings. Um, I've seen, you know, you would uh, anywhere from like, you know, six to ten, uh, seven to eleven, um, you know, Monday through Friday for four or five hours a night. Okay, great. Um, now, an important factor due to our condition is a great medical benefit. Besides my MS, I also su suffer from other medical conditions. Um, so expensive medical coverage is important to me. What companies provide that, or where can they be found? Um, again, well, in the I job description, you'll see whether or not they provide uh, provide those benefits. Companies really, I mean, they're trying to get uh, they're trying to get people excited, so they're going to list anything that's good uh, in the job description to try and pique your interest. Medical, dental, 401k, wish reimbursement. You'll see those listed out. Okay, great. And if you are on, on Social Security, you do get the ex extended Medicare for up to eight and a half years, so you don't have to worry about um, about that. Um, what you're talking about, Paula, is if if they do wind up uh, losing their benefits because of the fact that they're earning over a certain amount of money. Correct. Why? Right. right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, but the Medicare under still continues. work, you continue. So that's another benefit of assigning your ticket to an employment network. It just sort of protects you. Great. Uh, Great. Now, someone it, wanted it, it, a lot of people don't know that that keep their medical benefits. I mean, that's that's huge. That's yes, a that's, huge benefit of the program. That is, and a lot of people have that concern. So that that's really good for them to know. Um, someone also wanted to know if, if there is no sick pay or time off for sickness, and they ask because of the comment that was made, if you have an off day, you have to show up. There right. is sick time. Um, you, mm -hmm. Once you've passed the, the training period, that's my understanding. Uh, but yes, during so training, a lot of times it's mm -hmm. 100%. Yes, yeah. training 100%. You, you absolutely, if you miss a day in training, um, depending, it, some companies have a very, very strict, like if you only have a week's worth of training and you miss a day, I guarantee you that's it. Uh, but if you have a, a six to eight week um, and you miss more than one day, uh, if you, you go into that second day, you may be on, on you, you will first be counseled, uh, but then you, know, you could definitely be terminated for not being able to, you know, be there. So definitely 
plan on on all of that. But then he started accruing personal time off. Um, and so, you know, those vacation days, those personal time off days can be used uh, for, for illness. Great. Um, so we have another one here that asks, can I work from various locations as long as the computer and Wi-Fi have the proper setup? Right. Um, you know, if, if companies are going to test the computer upload and download speeds first and foremost. They're going to list out the requirements for what your computer should or should not be. As long as your computer um, is, you know, relatively new, you should have no issues. You can probably buy a computer that would fit the specs of almost any work at home company uh, for about three hundred dollars. You know, just a little laptop, desktop, computer. Um, a lot of times they will want you to have a separate monitor, again, because you have 10 to 15 windows open. Uh, but again, all of those requirements are going to be really well listed in the job description. Great, great. Now, um, someone wanted to know, are the interviews face-to-face -face or virtual? That is a great question. We have used a combination of different types of interviews. So you, there are recorded interviews. There are They'll send you a link. You click on it. Uh, you can either be uh, doing a webcam uh, recorded interview, or you can just have a, a phone recorded interview where the questions will be there. Uh, they'll be read to you, uh, and then you press a button and you record your answer. And the company there is looking for uh, your energy, your pacing, your tone, and the content of your answers. So uh, you know, but those are very effective, and you'll we're seeing more and more variety of uh, different options that are out there. I mean, used to it was always face to face, right? But now face to face can be through a computer. It could be a Skype conversation, um, but then again, it could just be a phone conversation. So when you are going through the initial conversation, um, you know. Pay attention when you apply. Again, you'll, you'll see what those requirements are. At Sutherland, the first thing that we did was send out the link to the recorded interview. Um, and we had people doing that before we ever asked them to sit down um, and spend an hour doing a behavioral assessment. So you know, a lot of companies have different styles in how they take people through the process. That's just something to consider. Lots of different options. But you, generally speaking, uh, for very few positions, will you need to do an on-site face-to-face? Most positions in the work-at-home realm um, can be very virtualized through technology. Great, great answer. Thank you. Um, someone wanted to know: um, Do you recommend the job seeker set up an email address just for the job search activity? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you have an email. Um, <laughs> that discloses um, anything about your hobbies or anything like that 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 might not be professional. Uh, I, I've seen some, and I, I can't even repeat them. <laughs> some that I've seen. Um, I've also seen people, you know, entering passwords when they apply for a job. They don't realize that we can see that because a lot of times uh, you'll you know, forget your password and your recruiter needs to be able to give it to you. Uh, so we've seen some, you know, profane passwords. So yes, uh, set up one that is particularly for the job search. It makes it so much easier to avoid the spam, um, and it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to check the spam folders, um, and it keeps your identity very professional. Okay, great. Um, I think we have time for one more live. And as I promised you all, you will get your questions answered. Um, maybe not tonight, but within the next few days. We do have them all here and, and will respond. And this last question is, um, regarding typing speed, what if I use voice dictation to type? Is that acceptable? Um, I, I'm going to say no for a call center position. But yes, most uh, likely would be fine for other types of positions. Um, and that would be something that you would discuss with the recruiter during the interview. Um, you know, it will specify all the different things that you need to do. And you say, in order to do the job, this is what I use. 
is that you know is that compatible with your plat technology platform? If typing I, I isn't the number one thing that you're doing for the job, it should be fine. If it's the number one thing that you're doing, it might be an issue. Okay, great, great to know that. I know that we have a, a recruiter that we work with regularly who uses JAWS. She comes to our job fair and is able to interact with people with her JAWS. So, you know, the call center positions are pretty tricky, but as far as they're very specific about what what the minimum qualifications are, and but there are a lot of other different types of jobs that are more flexible mm -hmm. with with the ability to incorporate jobs. There's a lot of jobs out there, work from home jobs that are partially working in the community. I see a lot of people able to get a job out in the community and then transition part of the time to work at home. That can be very helpful. Uh, to get you into a, a more comfortable position that you're more able to accommodate your disability, uh, especially with some of the different types of jobs. Sometimes you need to start at, at you know, in the community and then then ask for work at home as an accommodation. Yeah, yeah that's so great. Are, that's, those that's, are, yeah. Hey, I'm seeing uh, that people are saying there's no sound in the chat window. Yeah, we, we, we are actually um, just about running out of time, so um, I do want to um, uh, just quickly show the slide here. Paula uh, wanted all of you to know that there is a free webinar for the first 250 people. Um, there is the website uh, that you can go to to register. Um, tips for attending virtual job fairs, how to get noticed. A virtual job fair is a job fair that's done virtually. Um, through through the computer and on the phone, um, and uh, let me move on. We, we have a job fair, a virtual job fair coming up April 14th. I think we have about 20 employers now. Most of them are work at home employers, uh, so it's you know it would be a good a good time for you to make some connections there. And I do know a lot of people who get hired from the job fairs. So whether or not you're on Social Security Disability, we do open this up to the general public. Okay. Uh, so Thanks. I would encourage you to attend. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. I'm going to pass it back over to Laura now. Terrific. Barbara, thank you for a great job moderating tonight's presentation. And I also want to thank Sally and Paula for their expert advice, and I appreciate your contribution to tonight's webinar. I would also like to inform you of some additional resources that you might, might find informative and helpful. On the Kendu MS website, mscandu.org, you will find archive webinars, e-news, and library articles, including an article on managing your employability. You can also su submit a question to the Ask the Kendu team, which will be answered by the, our team of MS Kendu experts. Barbara, can you tell us about some of the national MS resources? Happy to. Thanks, Laura. I wanted to highlight some of the National MS Society's resources dealing with employment. We have a variety of employment brochures, including a win-win approach to reasonable accommodations, should I work, and other titles not listed here, including information for employers. Employment Matters is comprised of video segments about key employment issues and a toolkit on job searching. The website listed here, nationalmssociety.org, employment is full of employment information including disclosure, accommodations, and additional information on career change and resources. And also, if we did not get to your question this evening, uh, if you were on the phone, you couldn't post it, or we, we, you didn't ask it this evening, feel free to email your employment-related questions to employmentquestions at nmss.org, and we will follow up with you. Terrific. Thank you so much, Barbara. And I'd like to inform you that the next presentation in our webinar and telelearning series will be on Tuesday, April 12th at the same time, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The topic for next week, uh, the next webinar will be Myelin, Movement, and the Mind, Hot Topics in MS Research. We will look at the role research has played in understanding the cause and management of MS as we explore three diverse avenues of research. As always, you can register for the webinar and telelearning series free of charge on the Kendu MS website, mscandu.org. And one last thing I would like to ask, 
For those of you participating live tonight, you will see a survey appear on your computer screen. We do have a new survey format, so please take a moment to complete the survey and share your input. Your feedback helps us to continue to improve our webinar and telelearning series. One other note, you will also receive a PDF copy of tonight's slides by email. And I would like to thank everyone for participating tonight and also wish you a good night. So thank you very much, and we appreciate your participation. Thank you. Good night.